Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals, such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady, who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. I'm here with Mian Mullen with Essential Source Coaching. So, Mian, you live in Fairfield East, which uh, you're south of Fairfield Avenue. You're east of downtown Victoria. Um, you're quite close to the water here. Great area with the trees reaching over the street I love it one of the favorite places for people to come and visit in Victoria what drew you to this neighborhood there is a very um, like a peaceful energy I find and maybe it is because of the big trees like you said creeping right over there's something very special about it and there's a lack of big stores as well which I like it's very um Community, neighborhood, community, like just homes and yeah, it's got a nice little feel to it. It was about feeling. Did you grow up in a neighborhood like this? No. <laughs> the opposite. I grew up in the Yukon in Whitehorse. So it was very different from this. And this is why I think I love it so much. All the green and the ocean. Yeah. Did you find it overwhelming moving from, because I worked at an international school and we had kids who came from the far north, like we're talking Nunavut and Whitehorse. Mm -hmm. Did you find it overwhelming uh, moving here in the trees at the beginning? I don't think overwhelming was the right word. I think it was more like enlightening and just like, wow, like the green, the lush, the, all of that was just like, it was heartwarming coming from like a bleaker, darker, snowier colder <laughs> environment yeah so just night and day <laughs> and so um did you look all over different areas before you moved to Fairfield uh I did I originally lived here in my 20s and it's something about you know you come down into Cook Street Village and just even all of Fairfield there's just this different energy that I felt yeah and uh, I liked it I've had clients who've lived here and then they've moved away and they want to be back here. Like that's how much they love it. There is like this kind of really, I think like I already said, this like peaceful, like almost healing energy down here. And and it's quiet. It's really quiet because there's not a lot of stores. And I like that. So, Okay. So, um, so you have a, a young son and he's going to school in the area. Um, what school? Because there is a choice of schools. What to, and and tracks? What did right. you pick? So the the catchment school for for this area is Margaret Jenkins, and it is a dual track French and English, and it goes to grade five. So that was a big part of why I moved back here last summer. Um, it's just a nice elementary school, and we can walk to school. It's really nice. Yeah. Are there lots of little kids in the area? I think so. I think there's a good mix. Yeah, because we actually had neighbors that were over in Oak Bay and moved to this street because they had no kids on their street. Mm -hmm. It happens. And same thing for us, actually, in Machosan. We are in a street with quite elderly people, and it's a bit lonely, actually, for our kids. Yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, my kids are 15 and 17. We've been there for five years. Yeah, five years. Nice. Um, so what about in terms of, uh, places like, so you're right near Fairfield Plaza. Do you go there a lot? All the time. We got thrifties right there. So again, I can walk to go get my groceries, which I really, really love. Yeah. So we can just kind of walk everywhere and everything you, everything you, that you just need is, is close by. Right. But none of the extras that I really don't want around. Right. So what's in that mall? Oh boy. Okay. So they got the thrifties. I think they've got all the essentials. There's a bank, dentist, pharmacy, pub, um, liquor store. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, I think there's a little flower store. store. Yes, the little flower. There's a little clothing shop. You know, all optometrists. They've got hardware. Hardware, that's right. They've got all the basics covered. Yeah. Do you find, I find that I get a bit fearful when I go into that um, parking lot though, because people aren't the best drivers there. 
You want to kind of time it sometimes. Yeah. Like just before dinner, it's pretty packed in there for sure. Yeah. And it's like a tight thrifties. They can't expand, but still it's just got this quaintness to it. I like it. So tell everybody what thrifties is exactly. Oh, thrifties, the grocery store. It's the BC Island. I think it's just on the island grocery store. Yeah. I just love it. And they have lots of local um, suppliers. So it's really nice. Okay. So um, what about proximity to downtown? It's very good, right? So it's only a five-minute drive to like downtown Inner Harbor, um, but even better. Am I getting to the punch or <laughs> spoiling the big surprise? It's like at the end of the street is the ocean. There's like so many little beaches I can go to. So there's like the Gonzales Bay, which is fabulous and all the people are out there on their sup boards and then there's the um ross bay clover point beach right there like this is all within walking of just like literally minutes so yeah and then just a drive five minute drive to downtown do you go downtown for lots of events not so much and i probably should be biking more most people in this area just bike downtown to go to work and stuff like that so that's pretty cool too yeah, I've had clients who've wanted to move down here because they work in the legislature or government and they want to be able to get to work quickly. Absolutely. And then there's Beacon Hill Park too. I mean, it's just, I literally feel like this is like the greatest little spot. Shh. <laughs> do you go, do you ever go to the petting zoo in the park? Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. And the flowers and the peacocks and the the and the running of the goats. And the goats. I mean, it's just all just right, right there. It's just so cute. They have pickup, actually. Um, what's it called? Frisbee. I find there, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, right along the, the water there, like on the edge of Beacon Hill Park, there's always some sort of event going on. And the one road, like Dallas Road, that comes along both sides here, there's always, it's always like, I would say every second weekend it's being blocked off for some sort of like marathon or cycling or like this is where all the big events tend to swing through and by so it's kind of cool yeah the times column is 10k comes along here yeah so you always get a front row seat to all the stuff um do you get involved in things like that the times <laughs> colonist or I'm trying to find out all about you <laughs> don't put me on the spot um no I'm not <laughs> That is the purpose of the interview. <laughs> I am single parenting, so I'm not really doing a lot of volunteer work right now. Um, that'll be coming. I think I would, if I was going to be volunteering, this is what I did when I was living up island, was uh, more of the hospice type volunteer work. Yeah, that's my, my thing. That's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do a lot of volunteering. I ran a TC10K clinic for a couple of years on Sunday mornings and uh it's a great program it's 13 weeks and you get a professional speaker in every week you learn how to walk run and basically work out so that um by the end you're able to run the 10k and there's also 1k for your kids a lot of fun hmm. my child's in elementary which means there's a lot of volunteering going on there yeah that's where I spend my extra time <laughs> Do you um, find, like, are the, like, how big is his class? There was only 16, I think, kids. It was 16 or 17 kids in his class. Wow. So do you find, I actually, that's a perfect size. I'm a former teacher. So 16 nice. is a great number. Right. What grade did you teach? I taught uh, middle school and high school and university. Okay. Well, my guy was just in grade two last year. But, yeah, Margaret Jenkins is just really really good yeah the principal is like literally smiling and like a happy guy like there's I feel no stress in that school which is I think pretty amazing yeah really beautiful school and then he'll go to Monterey after that would be the next one in the in the catchment yeah yeah so I know the principal of that school and he's a great guy as well I um, actually grew up with his uh, wife on Briar Hill Avenue in Toronto wow hence Briar Hill Ah, realty. Ding, ding, ding. I got it. <laughs> what do you do with other parents in the neighborhood? Um, go for walks. Do you go to the Moss Street Painting? We did. We did in the Moss Street Market. We've gone down there a few times. Um, yeah, it's just a, a great area to go for walks. And I, that's kind of my favorite thing to do is just go, go walking. Tell me about the Mar Moss Street Market. Hmm... It's got food and vendors. 
<laughs> when is it? Oh, it's always on Saturdays from, I think it's 10 to 2 or maybe 10 to 1, something like that. Um, yeah, it's a fabulous little market and it's right next to the school um, down there. So there's a playground for the kids and everything. Um, tons, of course, all the local people out with all their produce and all their really cool stuff that they make. You know, really, really good market. Yeah. And uh, is it expensive, like compared to thrifty? No. Okay, well, let's move on to food because I do see some yummy stuff here. Tell me where you got that. At the little cottage, bakery? yeah, the cottage bakery right at Moss and Fairfield. So that's just a couple minutes down. Yes. They are the best. Da, 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 da. Yeah, and you know why they're the best? Because they don't over sugar all the things that I've talked to them about it. Everything that they make has just the right amount of sweetness. It's not high sugar. It's just right. So it's really good. I really like their almond um, croissant. Mm, and their carrot cake. The best. The best. And they make awesome sandwiches, actually. Everything. It's such a cute little corner there. And there's the bicycle shop, too, around the corner. And a couple of other things. Dutton's. Yeah, and there's like a naturopath, and what else is on that little corner? On the other corner, there's a doctor's office, actually, where we take our kids, and there's also a veterinarian clinic. The vet, yeah. Yep, everything you need. So what about for women in business? Tell me, what do you do? How do you network? Well, um, I go to net a couple of different networking here in, in Victoria. Only two, actually. Um, yeah, and this is how we met. So eWomen Network, and what's the other one? Uh, the WWBN, so the Women's West Shore Business, Business Network. Network, yeah. Okay, and do you find they um, bring in a different crowd or the same crowd? Um, no, it is a little bit of a, I mean, it's definitely a different vibe. It is a different crowd. It's hard to put my finger on it, though, but it's it's different for sure, Yeah. I find the, uh, um, like, people are at different stages of their career on at the different networks. Yeah, and actually, I think the West Shore one might be a little bit older, just slightly, I think, in general. You mean the membership? The the women are just a little bit older. The one, the e-women seems just slightly younger. Have you noticed that? Um, no, I haven't been for a while, but I'll go to that one. I'll I'll go back and check it out. Okay, and anything else you want to highlight about this area? Mm. What about, do you go to uh, Oak Bay Village? I do, I do, yeah. Again, it's kind of like a five-minute drive away. Actually, we end up going over there a lot because of the rec center with my child. So there's just like anything and everything over at Oak Bay Rec and then Oak Bay Avenue with all the little shops and stores and nice little restaurants is another just like a, just a gem of, yeah, love it. Yeah, so you really actually do have the best of both worlds here. Very central. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so if you want to know more about Fairfield East, you can contact me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. But stay tuned because we're going to be back. Mian is going to talk about her business, which is a coaching business, and uh, we're going to learn her unique approach to working with <laughs> women who are actually tired of using alcohol step into their highest selves. Okay, so we'll be back soon. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camos in Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. Hello, everybody. It's Jane Johnston. I'm with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosin, and we're back with Mian Mullen with essential source coaching so uh first of all what is the focus of your coaching practice um right so i work with women usually in midlife that seems to be the <laughs> average age women who are tired of using alcohol and they are ready to really step into a higher version of themselves. So some of the women I work with have actually stopped drinking for, for months already, but they've realized they've got some healing and issues and growth that they want to, you know, step into and expand. Or step away from, step out of. Yeah, it is it's a, it is a dual, like there's healing to be done, right? Like most people we know if they're kind of overdoing it, you know, and it's, these are not alcoholics. This is like, these are teachers and nurses and people who go to work every day and have families and homes like 
but they're just drinking a little bit too much and a little bit too often and they're ready for something different because they know it's just not working it's just making them tired so what what do you what's your approach um it's very holistic um i'm also a yoga teacher and an energy healer so and i'm also a highly sensitive intuitive person so it's um it's some deep stuff we go into yeah but I have this eight week program so it's very structured and guided that they walk through and they have their homework and then we have also every week we have a one-on-one you know mentoring session where we dive into the the issues and the first few weeks are pretty intense because we go right to all those places that are painful the traumas and the shame and the all those little reasons that you've been kind of stuffing down that's why it's so easy just to have a drink and (sighs) <sighs> right? Rather than deal with your shit. So, <laughs> well, that's putting it quite plainly. <laughs> but most women, you know, they have this awakening, this like kind of upgrade around 40 ish, right? Did you find that? Yeah, I just had had kids and I felt like um, I needed to step into who I was again. Right. It's it's kind of this like internal calling or awakening that they they know there's something else and something more, but it's like... Someone guide me, show me the the path, right? So that's what I've got for them. I think we have a unique time in our life after we have children where we've been at home with them sometimes. Um, For me, I went a little stir crazy because I'm a, like a, my bank code, um, my personality profile is knowledge. So it's all about uh, Learning. learning all the time. So when... I was at home I just like okay well what am I going to do next like it was it was a real time to allow me to reflect Mm -hmm. and uh go into what what I would want to do to make myself happy exactly and that's when you start to look at what's in your life and reflecting like is this helping me or hindering me is it serving me or is it dragging me down How, how do you find you get your clients um, it's been through networking as, um, has been great. Um, social media, Instagram is kind of my favorite, but, uh, <laughs> what's your Instagram handle? It's just my name. Um, but my website domain for anyone who is curious is womenwillrise.ca. And what does that mean for you? Oh boy. (laughs) That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, Yeah. So I went through my own kind of little awakening process like six years ago when I decided to ditch the booze and like really jump into my own growth and purpose and all of that, which like came after having a child. Like there's this, you know, this kind of cosmic upgrade and your mind just like, woo. But can, do you have like almost the courage to step into it and explore that side of who you are, right, on a deeper level? And so, yeah, over the last five, six years, I've really dove into my heart's calling and taken the courses and the learning and the healing and the growth and, and yeah, put it all together. So I find, I mean, I'm not a psychologist. I've taken lots of counseling courses at as a former teacher, Mm. but I'm just wondering if, um, people's partners have issues with the growth in somebody. Yes. (laughs) In a nutshell. Yes. They either step up or they have to step out of the way. I mean, right. In a relationship, you're either growing together and evolving together, um, or else it just doesn't work anymore. So yeah, when you go through a big evolution and you, you know, kind of step into the next version of yourself, you know, sometimes people in your life fall away, right? Friendships fall away that are no longer. And sometimes it's, it's sad, but yeah, I mean, have you read the book, The Dance of Anger? No. So it's about that sort of interaction. So um, if I change and you don't like the change, you're going to prod me until you get the reaction that you're used to getting because you're uncomfortable with my change. My, my, new, my new me, right? My more authentic me, right? And if you're not still maturing and growing into a more authentic you, it, yeah, it, it freaks you out. Like, get back in that box, I had you in that box and that's where I want to keep you because that's where I feel safe. So yeah, in a relationship, like a partnership, then it it gets tricky. 
So when you're finding women are having issues, is it uh, a whole family thing? Does it change the way they're parenting and maybe perceiving other people in their work, their family life? That's been actually one of the most, I think, well, one of the really rewarding things is how when a woman really like steps into this growth and healing and and getting really clear, right? Um, the the ripple effect into her children's lives is like, oh, it's just like the greatest, right? Because they'll always mirror what you're given out, right? So when you step into a higher version of yourself, your children step into a higher version of themselves. Like even if they're two years old, they reflect back a more balanced kind of healthy, yeah, like everything improves around you as you improve yourself, right? Yeah, I've, it's funny. Um, so I guess I kind of speak in, um, what's the word? I have a lot of sayings, right? And I always think my kids aren't listening. <laughs> Does it not? <laughs> I do though. I'm like, you know, I talk about uh, closing the gap a lot. The, which is finishing things and to really, um, you know, f- figure out, don't, don't do what, don't do something to make me happy, do something, well, obviously clean the kitchen or <laughs> your room, but, but do something that will eventually will make you happy. That will be where you're going to gravitate to because they're trying to make career decisions now. Right. So as we, and improve is not the right word, actually, as we step into, and this should be throughout your whole life, that you're constantly just stepping into like a higher version of yourself, like evolving, evolving, maturing. And, and as you do that, then again, you're just shining your best self, right? And then your children, oh, wow. Right. Cause you know, they don't ever do what we say. They do as we do. Do you ever hear from people, um, so I get this from other people, that, well, you're too strong, and so therefore you're overshadowing your partner and kids? You get that, that you're too strong. I get that. (laughs) I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you want me to not be myself? Right. So, well, that's kind of a whole nother little dynamic of um, masculine and feminine energies. So if you have a strong masculine energy of just like strength and um, kind of taking care of business and action and you just need to have a balance within your partnership that they can then hold the other dynamic, right? It's not a man or a woman thing. It's just different kind of energy. I find we take, we like we actually have a really good relationship in terms of our values. We're very aligned. In fact, the same stuff comes out of his mouth that comes out of my mouth when our kids do something. So that's very easy, I find. a lot. Do you find that that's an issue too? So there's the values, there's the action, you know, those are their self-perception, but there's also the core values. Hmm. Do, do those get revise as people evolve well they have to be right you have to be kind of constantly as a as a partnership um be kind of almost going back to your mission statement and your vision right and hopefully as a partnership if you've got um if your spouse has been abusing alcohol right been using alcohol as a crutch or a this or that you would hope in your partnership that they would simply want to hold that space for you to heal and evolve into your best stuff but stuff so that you can then come back together and have that vision and that partnership on a higher level, right? Together, you'd hope. Yeah, like, <laughs> i.e., don't offer me a drink every time we have dinner. Uh, yeah, they need to be supportive of the healing process for sure and give you that space. I mean, that's the ideal. If someone really loves you, they want the best for you, right? They want you to step into your authentic, true self, right? Not having it fogged up with the booze. So hopefully they would. Why did you pick alcohol? Or do you have people who come to you with drug issues? No, no, I'm really focused in on gray area drinking for women. It's um, because I lived in that gray zone, so I know it well. Um, And it's becoming a bit of a like a silent epidemic right now for women who are especially in their 
40s some I've got some 30s and I've talked to some in, women in their 50s but you know we grew up in the 70s and the 80s right as kids and teens and so that's when drinking was just like it's like a free-for-all and no one ever told me that it wasn't a good idea and if, if anything it's like what's wrong with you if you're not right you must be sick or pregnant if you're not having a drink well I even then I think people <laughs> did drink when they were pregnant <laughs> I yeah, I think so. But now we know that it, literally one drink is actually harmful. And so that there's this silent, um, like I said, it's almost like epidemic right now. The numbers of women in midlife that are stuck in this gray area and, you know, drowning themselves in booze, but they're not alcoholics yet. The numbers are shocking and they're spiking, spiking, spiking. Like they're going up by like 200%. It's crazy, crazy. Yeah, well, and and also it's dangerous too, right? So drinking any amount of alcohol increases a woman's risk of cancer by 15%. All kinds of cancer or certain kinds? Uh, It's breast cancer, um, liver, all the gastrointestinal reproductive ones. Those are the biggies by 15%. Yeah, so it's, it's alarming. It is alarming. So why are why is the government or Health Canada not saying anything? <laughs> Where is that study from? Uh, which the the fifteen? Yeah. Oh, the fifteen percent. I read it from multiple different. I mean, every doctor knows this. Alcohol is a poison, and it increases your risk of cancer. Right? It's poison. It is toxic. Right? So to have it in your system is it's only going to increase. And if you've ever had any type of cancer, um, or it's in your family, like I would be steering clear do you find when uh, women go through this process are their husbands also abstaining um or partners some are some aren't there's usually been you know other big issues right you know it's all we're all it's all connected you know like if we're drinking too much there's probably other issues going on and there's going to be a, a lack of connect you know, proper deep connection with your spouse, because when you drink, there is no deep connection with anyone, right? Your life goes on pause, whether you're having three glasses or however many, right? So there's no deep connections going on. So there's a rebuilding of, of, you know, I think even trust and deep connection with your partner that's, that needs to happen and get reestablished as well. Mm -hmm. It's complex. You know what? No one may have ever even said to this person that they have a problem or that they should quit or even slow down but they know they have an issue they know they have a problem they know that it's there's a it's got a grip on them but like I said they're still going to work they got their kids they're you know doing it all and this is part of the problem right the women are just doing it all (laughs) so boy that you know glass of wine at the end of the day is really enticing which then turns into a bottle right so it's actually robbing from them instead of doing what they were hoping it would do so at the end of eight weeks what happens transformation (laughs) in a nutshell it's transformational Mm -hmm. it's yeah do sorry do they have something else that they could do with you after that like if they relapse Uh, yeah and that's interesting that you're you're really getting into the hardcore terms like relapse and stuff like that it's um I really feel like I help women they reach a point where they don't want to drink because they're so they feel so good and fulfilled and given all the tools now to deal with the stress and anxiety and overwhelm and all of that that it's not necessary to have a drink and they don't even want to because it's going to take them away from how good they feel right Um, and even if they have a moment where you know it's they break down or have a really tough time and they fall back into an old habit an old pattern it's okay just start fresh the next day, go back to the tools and the strategies and f- back to filling up the void, right? That they were feeling probably. Fill their own cup first with water, <laughs> not alcohol. <laughs> herbal tea, herbal tea is the way forward. <laughs> okay, so your ideal client is? A middle-aged woman who is literally e- either tired of using alcohol or or she's already quit and now is feeling kind of like, oh God, I've got a lot of work to do here. <laughs> Someone show me the way, right? Yeah. And how do people get in touch with you? 
Uh, best way is right on the, the website womenwillrise.ca um, or they can find me on Facebook and uh, Instagram, me and Mullen. How do you spell your name? Yeah, this is tricky. So it's M-E-I-Y-A-N, Mian, Mullen, M-U-L-L-I-N. And uh, Instagram, sorry, is Mian Mullen? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So if you want more information, if you are having some issues with alcohol and maybe you want some clarity, you can talk to Mian. If you want some information on the Fairfield East area, you can talk to me. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Mosin. Take care and have a great day and welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston.